Welcome to another episode of Biz Money Talks with Tracy Bissett. I'm your host, Tracy Bissett, and I'm so excited. We have a very special guest today, Wendy Brookhouse. So welcome to the show, Wendy. Thank you so much, Tracy. Delighted to be here. Oh, we're very excited uh, to have you here. You've been a guest on Young Money, and uh, I know that you work so much with business owners, so we wanted to have you here as well. And so you are a financial advisor and money coach, and you really promote how to find, keep, and grow wealth, which is super important. And you know that creating wealth is more than just the numbers and more than math. And so you really focus on addressing baggage and behaviors that keep people from doing what they know they need to do, uh, even if they don't know how to do it, but just how do they do they get that, that done? And as founder and chief strategist of Black Star Wealth, you've developed innovative financial planning tools like the One Number Solution and the Total Life Wealth Accelerator uh, so that your clients can get information, understanding, and have a whole new approach to looking at things. Uh, so welcome again, Wendy. Thank you so much. Well, I'd love it if you can share a little bit more um, about you kind of informally now that I've read your formal bio, um, your experience and, and your business would be great. Absolutely. I have actually been in this business now for uh, 16 years, which is uh, shocking to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I have been, I think, in the self-employed, if you will, for about 21 years. So, um, you know, giving up that regular paycheck and tech support is always a shock to the system. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it, it's been quite a journey because I don't think I ever thought I would be an entrepreneur or a business owner, you know, when I was younger. So, you know, getting into this road and, and helping people and my journey to self um, to self employment, I, I got my MBA uh, and then I was starting a consulting company and I was creative intelligence group and I helped people with their um, marketing plans, their business plans, their strategic plans, some of the implementations. And I was always a little different that I always focused a lot on not just what you needed to do, but how to do it. And I think in many cases, that's what's missing from a lot of stuff is you should do this. And like, I'm like, well, that's awesome. But how do I do it? Like, <laughs> I don't just want to know what. So and then I took that whole thing over into the financial sphere. And when you look at um, my undergrad was in finance, so it was a natural per transgression over. Plus, I found that um, the same approach was required. We have a challenge. We have options to consider. We need to evaluate those options, and then we need to make a decision, and then we have to implement. So really, if you look from the consulting fear and then go right into building a, a strong financial plan, it's not that different. So it's the same skill sets from that part. And I always say I had to just learn uh, where to get the answers to the questions, because I don't think we can ever know all the answers. And especially in today's world, everything's changing so fast. Tax laws, this law, that law. So you have to be nimble and be able to go find the answer as opposed to always know the answer. And so I have uh, built that, been, been able to bring that business owner mindset into my business. And so I think another differentiator is I think a lot of advisors have a practice where I have a business. So there's a different mentality going in and I can give a lot of been there, done that type of advice. <laughs> Excellent. And I, I know that all to be true. And so um, we're going to have a great conversation today. And we know that it's so important as business owners uh, that we need to think about the implications of our actions. Mm -hmm. And we need to be honest with ourselves about how things are actually going. And that enables us to be ready for as things change in the business environment. And as you just alluded to, everything doesn't always go well. Um, we learn a lot from the things that we do well, and but probably more from the things where we struggle a little bit. Um, and, and learning from other people is a great way to learn too. And so we're going to cover some common mistakes that business owners are making, how we can navigate on certain times in our business. And I know that you've got lots of great tips and insights to share with us. So that's to set the stage for our, our discussion today. And you do work with so many business owners um, in the work that you do, and nobody is perfect. Uh, certainly okay. not uh, either of us, and, and nobody is perfect out there. And mistakes and missteps are certainly going to happen. And we, as I said, we can learn so much from them as well as what's going well. So what mistakes have you made or have you seen business owners made and make and how can they avoid them? So much of it might be um, to slow down a bit. So I, I picked three um, mistakes that uh, I've made or I've seen being made. 
<laughs> and uh, <laughs> those so other people I, I, I out there, like, not you. <laughs> you know, when we think about mistakes or errors or you know what have you, so many times I think the world expects us to be perfect, Tracy. So that's why I love how you set the screen that we're not all perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to have relationships that have no judgment zones in the sense that if it's judgy, we're not going to learn from that behavior or you know hear what people have to say. So uh, that's how I like to approach things. Ego at the door. Let's just dig in and mm -hmm. fix the, fix what's going on. But I look at um, mistakes actually being potentially more informative than successes in that, um, you know, and I think studying other people's uh, failures are actually can get you further ahead sometimes than their successes. I think that's the next book, Tracy, <laughs> that needs to be written. <laughs> Here are the top 10 mistakes I made and how you don't need to do them. So, Absolutely. and that's kind of like my mantra is I, I have made so many mistakes and I've learned from all of them. And then now I teach, get to teach my clients hey, this is what I did, here's how you can avoid it. And so by even actually being able to give that firsthand account, I think it hits home a little more. It's less mm -hmm. academic, if you will. So as a result, I think people listen. So mistake number one, Tracy, <laughs> no documentation. So, oh. um, you know, how many times have we done handshake deals? We think we're both on the same page about something and we don't. And I think back, uh, this goes way, way back. Um, probably uh, 15, 16 years or more. But I went entered into an agreement with a friend of mine. And uh, somehow I thought um, the risk was going to be here and it wasn't. And so anyway, I ended up losing a lot of money and a friend over it. So uh, as a result of that, um, I always say document, document, document. And the other thing is, is now because of that lesson, when I got into another business relationship, and we had a shareholders agreement, we were able to follow that agreement. So um, it actually made that transaction so much easier at the end because we'd already mapped out, here's how it works. Here's, this is the process, here's involved in the process. And so there's no, none of this, let's negotiate the process now. No, that's already been done. So having that uh, documentation, I think is a very important thing. Um, have you seen that yourself, Tracy? Absolutely. And certainly when everyone's um, happy, when everyone still cares about each other, it's the same thing with marriage contracts and, and things yep. in our personal life. Let's set out the expectations, like what we're doing together, what happens, should this not work out? Because there's a chance it might yep. not. And, ha and make sure that we treat each other fairly and respectfully all the way through um, because things happen. And so when we do it up front, then there's no confusion. Like you said, you just follow the process. And there's always going to be some people who try to get around the process. But if you're coming in with good faith and you're negotiating in good faith, usually you can come and go from partnerships um, as things change. So uh, definitely see that. And um, with small businesses in particular, though, uh, it is sometimes challenging because you want to get going and you don't yep. want to hire that lawyer and you don't want to um, pause to get that stuff and done. And you don't want to spend that money maybe because you think, oh, I don't, I, we're good. Yeah. Can happen with uh, family members too when they're in your business. So always important to iron out roles, who's in charge mm -hmm. of what, what happens if one of us is going to leave the business. So yeah. that's an excellent one. And uh, that's a good number one. Okay. <laughs> number two, not reading your documentation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've had the occasion to read a number of leases uh, for different businesses for myself in particular. And I think there's this perception too, that if you're dealing with a big company, that this is it, you'd have no room to negotiate and you would be surprised. So um, I had a shop in the, way back in the day in Halifax Shopping Center, it was just this tiny thing, but the lease I think was this thick. So I did it this way. I went through it first myself and I highlighted all the things I thought were ridiculous, i.e., hey, if we want to use your space for something else, we have the right to move you and we don't have to have another space for you for up to six months. Boom. That was in the agree. That was in your business. <laughs> right. So, oh, oh, what happens to me now for six months? Okay. I have no place to have my business, no place to run, but yet I'm still in locked in. Uh, so anyway, I negotiated that out. And so, uh, you know, but most people just sign. And so having that agreement is so important to read and understand the implications and really run through some what ifs in your head, Tracy. Mm -hmm. What if this happens? Well, what if I hurt myself? What if I do this? What if, you know, so that you can understand the implications. 
Um, my second example is I had another leasing agreement and it was interesting because when I read through it, you've never seen the number of yellow sticky pads that <laughs> I've had on the agreement going, this clause has to go, this clause has to go, this clause has to go. And it was so interesting is because when I read it, I go, I can tell you exactly every problem this landlord has had in the last 10 years. Because what all they did is they just threw in another clause that would try and cover it. You know, for example, uh, if you do not have your premises open for three days in a row, we're going to assume that you are out of business, blah, blah, blah. Or you can't do that. And I'm like, what? I'm not retail. <laughs> anyway, so it was, we got it out. But it was just fascinating that by reading those things, you're protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, oh, go in thinking that you do have some power in the sense that you can negotiate uh, clauses that are not in your favor. What we always have to remember is if the agreement is sent to us, that means it was drafted by someone who was looking after the other person's best interests, not yours. Absolutely. And I see it a lot with banking arrangements. Um, people mm. just sign. Um, and, and certainly I've had tons of conversations with customers and around and clients around, oh, were there covenants in that deal in your financing arrangement? Can you meet those covenants? And so do you, you know what they are? Is it called? numbers? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, my mistake number three is uh, not consulting or listening to your advisors. I think <laughs> this is a delicate line because um, not everybody has the same appetite for risk. Not everyone can see what you see, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that having those conversations and being open to the com uh, to taking that feedback and adjusting course can make a big difference. Um, I think about a client of mine who uh, he got presented this business opportunity, and they're like, "Ah, uh, we would like you to put a hundred thousand dollars in," and I'm like, and he was going to borrow the hundred thousand dollars to invest, and then when I read the, he had me read the deal and I'm reading it and going, I came up with a list of about 20 questions. And the interesting piece was, is that he wasn't actually interested in any of that feedback. He just wanted to do it. And he wanted me to say, okay. And I'm like, Oh, I'm like, if you absolutely must do this, why don't you go in at 25? You know what I mean? So you still did it, but uh, he ended up doing 50 and he ended up losing all of it. He um, wanted to be able to come back to you and say, Wendy, you said it was fine. And I wouldn't give them that, I, it, you know, even at our review meetings, I'm like, how's that investment? I really hope I'm wrong about. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that, those are the three big mistakes that I see that are made. And I know they're not financial, but they do affect your finances. For sure. Big time if you don't take care of them. Absolutely. And um, this notion though of being accountable is coming through on all of them. And yeah. I, I talk to all of my clients about you're in charge of this business, whether it's a business of you or you've got a team or you've got a partner, you need to be accountable for everything that's happening, which includes yeah. documenting things, reading things, um, making sure that you're listening and getting advice and taking it when it's appropriate. Um, yeah. And all of that does then translate into the financial side of the business, because if you get into a bad lease and you get kicked out or you get stuck there for years beyond when you wanted to be, yeah. that's all going to have a financial cost. If you well, make an investment and you lose your money, that you might have invested personally, but it's still probably going to have some impact back on your business because you might need to take more money out to fuel your life. You know, and in particular, I'm going to say um, personal guarantees, right? I think people forget all the time and they don't know that those are negotiable as well. Like they, they're going to ask for a personal guarantee for the whole term of whatever agreement, but maybe you can get them down to two out of five or three out of five years instead of the whole thing. And that's really, really important. Um, because things go wrong, as we've seen in the last year and a half, unpredictability mm -hmm. is a big thing. So the more that you've covered yourself, is it's important. On the flip side too, and I just had this experience um, with a hire and um, right before they were going to start and I was preparing the agreement, because I have a standard that was prepared um, that's sound, I just need to change a couple terms and conditions with the details. Um, I started to feel uncomfortable. So I found myself starting to change the agreement to cover off like your, your situation with that landlord, you could, you could see all the situations they had. And yeah. I realized if I'm trying to make this many tweaks to a document, I probably shouldn't get into this arrangement because I'm already feeling so concerned that I'm trying to cover myself off from a, a legal perspective when there's way bigger implications to my business with their access Absolutely. to information and all of that. So on when you're creating things, if you feel you need to 
cover every little thing you need to get back to do you trust the person because you need yeah. to get into agreements with people you trust yeah. agreed and so the last 18 months has been a bit wild a little bit crazy all kinds of uncertain things some people uh -huh. doing really well some people pivoted and, and recovered some people yeah. still struggling and figuring yeah. out what they're going to do so as we look forward to brighter days, lockdowns are ending. Uh, what do you think business owners should be aware of? And, and so any lessons you can share from your extensive experience um, that you know are kind of tried and true? I think all the business owners who are listening would really appreciate learning awesome. from them. I think I might throw you for a loop again. I'm gonna talk about indicators and I'm gonna talk about the difference between lagging and predictive, all right? So if we are having uh, lagging indicators are how are your sales? How are the numbers last week? How are this? These are maybe just a level set. Lagging is after the fact. Yes. And, we're, and then leading is like an alarm bell. Hey, danger coming. Yeah. Or if or I do X, Y, Z, this will produce this, which is the lagging indicator, right? So mm -hmm. let's talk about sales for a second. If sure. I look back and I said, oh, look, I had a sale of $5,000 last week. Boom. That's great. But that was last week. So it's an indicator of something that's already happened. So that's behind, like you said. Whereas if we were to start measuring the things that went into getting that sale, how many posts did I make on social media? How many people did I engage with? How many people did I have a, com a sales conversation with? So I might be able to work it down and going, hmm, okay, I did this many, uh, or if we just did phone calls from you know the back of the day, I made yeah. 10 phone calls, I had three connects, I talked to, you know, I talked to three people and I converted one. So what I know now is every 10 phone calls equals a $5,000 sale. So now I measure how many phone calls I made. Cause if I want to make a $10,000 week, I have to make 20 phone calls. Mm -hmm. Right? So those, that's a kind of a, a leading predictor. And those I think are more important as a measurement. Um, uh, as we're moving forward in this term of uncertainty, what you can control is what you do to get the sale. You can control all your own activities. And if you know that's what right. drives your sales, make sure you're scheduling that time. Absolutely. And that's often the hardest thing. Because business owners are kind of running around, putting out fires, fielding all well, kinds we're of things. chasing squirrels, Tracy, let's be honest. <laughs> so um, we, we do get we do get attracted to the shiny blingy thing. And sometimes we're like, oh, we gotta go try this. But you still have to make your so you still have to make so much money to cover everything off. So that almost needs to be your priority. And you have to start measuring your predictive because you know if you don't do that this week, in three weeks, it's going to be a zero, Absolutely. which is not good. And so some sales cycles take longer. And so we yeah. might have to be doing all of that now for six months down the road. That's right. And you it's know, um, not that's a, a great one that applies to pretty much any business because you know what yeah. you need to do to drive sales. But there are going to be some other ones that are indicative um, that might be specific by industry. Yeah. Um, so I, I was just working with a client and they're a private career college. And they know that if they have X number of employers reaching out to do certain types of assessments on potential students, those number of assessments actually then translate to how many people get registered into courses. So there's going to be unique things to your industry. Yes. Uh, if you're, if you're listening or catching the replay that you can think of. Um, so just give yourself a little bit of quiet time and think through them. And, and you don't want to come up with a list of 20. We only want to, right? No more than I would say three to five max. Right. Um, you know, because uh, if you're measuring too much, you're spending all your time measuring. So figure yes. out, like you said, take the time to figure out what are the two or three key things that I need to do. Some people call them high value activities, Tracy, mm -hmm. that will lead to me getting the results I want. Excellent. Yeah. Anything so else? My suggestion. That's my, I only have one there, Tracy. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. And it, um, it's not a magic bullet. It requires oh. thinking and taking time. And then the hardest part is the discipline to then put those activities in action that, that then are going to drive the results that you want. So not exciting and fun necessarily, but that oh, routine no. creates the yeah. consistency and the results you need. And just to tack on, because I guess I'm good at that, is calendar it. Yeah. Do you know what, uh, Tracy, I set all these goals. And then if I don't put time in my calendar to do the activities, um, I call it working off the side of my desk. So it doesn't get any attention very often. And if it does, it's half baked. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I got 10 minutes. 
that's not enough time to put quality work in. So that's when you have to put that time together and make yeah. sure you spot it in your calendar, make it a boundary thing you round a boundary around and do it. Yeah, I'm guilty of that as well. Some things I do leave till the end of the day and then it depends how I feel, which is not how you should be doing all those kinds of activities. Right. So excellent. And so when you think about um, the business owners you've been working with, you've been talking to, uh, what are you seeing that they're doing well? I really do want to commend almost, I think the vast majority of business owners have adapted, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said about pivoting, uh, it's about um, just seeing what needs to be done and going out and doing it. Uh, and if they had to close down, you know, because, you know, I had a number of business owners that went, you know, had a really good year lined up in 2020 and it went to zero overnight. Um, and so to think they took the space to start thinking about what was the next move. Um, and I think um, in particular, it, it may have shifted even because I think the front end of this whole weird time, I think we all thought it'd be done in three months. This was a yeah, lovely, nobody knew. Yeah. This was a lovely little break um, just from the routine, but you know, we'll be back at it. Well, probably by July. And here we are a year later and we're still not completely back. So yeah, we'll probably be uh, up on 18 months before everything's kind of fully open or even a little bit longer. And yeah. now with what's happening in the U S like whether or not the border is going to open is in question again. Yeah. Um, Cause I think people were strongly expecting it to open in August and that's not looking as strong a uh, possibility right now. It's interesting times. That is for sure. Excellent. Yeah. So I think uh, most people have adapted and spent time thinking about how they want to do the business. And I think that's key. And, and for everybody listening live or you're catching the replay, uh, it's important to be adaptable and agile all the time. So mm -hmm. we need to stay focused on our business, not just get into kind of a rut and, OK, I'm just going to go back to how I was doing things or or this new way I'm doing things. But continue to stay close to your customers, monitor what ha is happening with them, see if there's something new that you can bring to them. But make sure you're staying on top of the business so then you can make changes. And numbers are usually a great way for you to be able to. Um, to do that, to make sure that you're, you're seeing what's going on. Um, so before I let you go, Wendy, what final tips uh, can you leave with the business owners today? And it might be something new that you want to raise, or it might be something you've already mentioned that you want to reinforce just so everybody's got it really clearly as they're um, watching this conversation. I would encourage people to be deliberate. Um, I mean, I know you, you and I are both like a mono a mono on the number thing, um, but I think that people have to embrace the numbers because it's a necessary thing. Uh, find a way to love them. Mm -hmm. Find a way to know them. Uh, if you have to draw pictures because you don't like spreadsheets, just do something yeah. and spend that time working on your business. And also understand what your business is for. Your business is so that, yes, you can uh, actuate your purpose for some people. and But for all of us, it's so that we can have I'm going to call it a wealthy life, Tracy, time to spend with our family, time to spend with our friends, time to contribute to the community, trying to contribute to the world at large. Um, and so if you, you, you know, being deliberate about building your business because it's funding this is an important piece that people sometimes don't always draw the line on and, and don't necessarily pay themselves well, don't necessarily, yeah. there's a whole bunch of things that spill out of that. And then also understand what is um, what is the time when they the liberty point or the freedom choice? And I like to look at it as this way: is figuring out based on all the things going on and what you would do, your ideal life looks like. What do you, where do you need to get to so that you know that that's achievable? So that if you mm -hmm. felt like I'm tired, I'm done with this, that you could walk away. And I think everybody needs to know that number. Excellent. And I'm going to give a, a shout out to Renelle Bruder because it made me think of it. Uh, we just had a chat yesterday. She has um, designed this initiative, Project I Rise, to help um, victims of sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. And we were chatting yesterday about me coming to do um, pro bono um, financial chat with the, yeah. the women who are in that program. And so if you want to do those kinds of things in your um, time, you've got to plan for it. You've got to be deliberate. You've got to figure out how am I going to accomplish all the things I want. And mm -hmm. so that's being disciplined around your pricing so you can make enough money in the time you want to work. So then maybe you can free up some time to do other things. Maybe it's rest, relax with family. Maybe it is to donate your time. 
Also, maybe you want to hire employees. You're creating growth in the community yeah. uh, as well as you're getting that steady paycheck because you need to get paid and live your life as well because uh, there's the financial aspect. Uh, so I think that's really great to be deliberate um, as we're focusing on all of the elements of our life and we need time to be healthy. Um, yes, to well, make that's sure part of a wealthy life, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, so I think that's great, Wendy. Now, before I let you go, what are you working on now and where can people go to learn more about you? Well, they can go to blackstarwealth.com, which is my website. Some of the stuff that I'm working on is still kind of in behind the scenes. So uh, announcements will be coming soon. Um, one of the big things for business owners we're working on is helping them figure out all those numbers that are key, that are beyond the balance sheet and the profit and loss, right? These are more into the financial planning realm of things, but help mm -hmm. really understand that. So we're putting a program together that will help people well, we'll do a lot of the work, but we'll coach you as well through all of that and show you how to get to all those numbers. Excellent. And so we're going to put all of, um, i was just seeing a comment here from Laura, time is our most valuable currency and often missed or taken for granted. That is so true, Laura, uh, which is fantastic. We're going to put all of the links in the comments below if you're watching right now uh, live on social media uh, as well. We're going to include those in YouTube. And I know that um, you have a very kind invitation for anybody who's been, been yeah. listening or checking out the replay, Wendy. Yeah, so uh, I'm more, I'm so happy to connect with business owners and people who were even thinking about it or anything like that. And so um, I'm offering a 30 free 30 minute consult with me. And so you can just go down to uh, bookwithwendy.com, choose the 30 minute option, and let me know what you want to talk about and let's uh, get to know each other. Excellent. Well, that is wonderful. Um, so many great points. I love the mistakes that you raised, not having documentation, not reading documentation, which is that's a big one for me as well. And kind of a sub one of that is then then having the ability to negotiate, yeah. as you discussed, and then not like asking for advice and then not heeding it. Uh, so <laughs> you, you might as well just save the time and not ask uh, in the first place. Um, really loved your tip for those as we move forward to look at the leading and lagging indicators in our business, figure out what's going to drive our results and then get our routines in, in place. And that key about being adaptable and agile as we move forward is really critical, as well as being deliberate with our time, um, talents and our treasure so that we're making the kind of life that we want to. That's that's why business owners do what they do. Um, the other point that, that was kind of subtle um, that I certainly want to make sure we, we reinforce for listeners is the fact that we want you to learn your numbers, but you don't have to do it alone. So definitely get someone else to do your bookkeeping, work with an accountant, work with a financial planner, work with a financial coach like me. Um, get the support you need, but still stay accountable and responsible for everything. Um, but you don't need to figure it out alone. So if anybody was feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't even know where I would start, that's okay. If you know you need help on the financial planning side, reach out to Wendy um, and, and have that 30 minute consult. And certainly if it's around the education around your numbers oh, and, and yeah. all of that stuff, reach out um, uh, to me as well. And uh, we love uh, having these kinds of conversations. So thank you so much, Wendy, for joining us and sharing all of your experience and your personal stories, because um, I know that's going to really set the business owners up uh, who've been listening very, very well. So thank you. Thank you, Tracy. It was delightful. Wonderful. And so for those who want to keep this biz money conversation going, we do have our weekly biz money club. Uh, it's just a casual meetup. We do it online via Zoom and you can get registered at bizmoneyclub.com. So until next time, take good care and stay financially fit.